Hello everyone. Welcome to today's talk on a walkthrough of model interpretability and explainability methods. So in today's talk, we will be discussing about the different uh, model explainability methods available in Python. And we will be seeing the demonstration on the data set of Women in Data Science Datathon 2022 data set. That is a, a hackathon that is currently going on Kaggle and it is conducted by the women in data science stanford university group so um, before moving further i would like to introduce myself so my name is shreya sajal and i am a pre-final year student at iit guwahati i'm pursuing my btech from iit guwahati and uh, uh, i'm a kaggle notebooks master as well and a two into experts in the data set and discussion section also, I have an upcoming applied scientist intern role at Amazon for the summers of 2022. So this was all the relevant information about myself. Moving further, we will see what we have in store for today's talk. So in today's talk, the first of all, we will see the problem statement that is the WITS Datathon 2022 data set. So we will go through the data set. We look at the different columns of the data set and the target variable. What type of problem statement it is, regression, classification, machine learning, deep learning. We'll go through that. And then uh, we will uh, move to the main topic. That is, what is model explainability and why is it important? And then we will see how the model explainability methods work. Each and every method, we'll see how each of them work. And we will see a demonstration of the algorithm of the model explainability on the model that we will be running on the WITS Datathon dataset. So let's move further to the problem statement. So uh, moving on to the problem statement, we can see that we have the WITS Datathon 2022 dataset over here. So the data set, it mainly focuses, like the challenge is focusing on the prediction task that involves roughly 100,000 observations of building energy usage records that is collected over the seven years and a number of states within the United States. So we can see mainly you are given with a data set that consists of the building characteristics like the floor area, the facility type, weather data for the location of the building and uh, uh, the different energy usage for the building and the given year. So that is the site energy usage intensity. And this is the variable that is the target variable for your data set. And you have to be, you have to predict this on the test data set. So two data sets are provided the training data set and the testing data set so the testing data set does not consist of the site eui because that is the value that you have to predict and it is a continuous variable we will see further uh, in the notebook i will uh, illustrate how it is a continuous and what are the categorical variables in this data set so mainly you can see the data dictionary that has been provided over here we have the building id the year factor state factor building class etc etc and then we have the target variable that is site eui that is the site energy usage intensity so uh, over here you can see the train dot csv it consists of uh, like uh, 10 of 64 columns so 64 columns are there there out of which 63 are the uh, features of the data set uh, like 64 other features and one is the target variable so removing the target variable there are 63 other features that we will be looking at to make the predictions so moving further uh, in this notebook first i've imported all the necessary libraries for making doing the data pre-processing first and then moving to the model explainability and creating a model and then moving to the model explainability methods and how they are working so the data we see we download the data we load the data and we see that there are state factors building class and facility types that are the three categorical vary features a number of train samples are 75757 and test samples are 9705 and there are 63 features that are there and 64 including the target variable evaluation metric is the root mean square error that you are familiar with in that is the most common metric in the regression problems that is the square root of or difference between the true and the uh, predicted outcome and the square and then the mean of it so root root mean squared error 
then we have the we check for the missing values and we can see over here in this heat map also we can see so we can see that these are the six columns that are having missing values in the most uh, prominent numbers we cannot remove them because that will be a loss of in uh, valuable data so we will impute the values year build uh, was replaced with the current year and after that uh, the null column the other null columns they were handled through the simple imputer method that is available in the scalar scikit-learn library now you can see after imputing the values we are having zero missing values then for the categorical variables as our model machine learning models know only numbers so categorical uh, like uh, the categorical variables need to be transformed so i have done label encoding you can use other methods that are more experiment with other methods like one hot encoding and do it accordingly uh, according to the variables if it is ordinal or non-ordinal uh, then use label encoding only when required I am doing because the main focus of this talk is not the pipeline but the model explainability that I will move to and it has to cover the major part of the talk so after the local ex uh, after the label encoding I move to feature scaling so here we are having the feature scaling it is important because when you see this data frame you can see that from uh, some features you are having the minimum value 1 maximum value 6 for some you are having minimum values in lakhs and maximum values in like 10 lakhs range so these features are not at all scaled and it will create a way it can create like a number of problems in the final model uh, when you are fitting the model it can not give optimal results because of the non-scaled features so scale using the standard scaler and after that model i have used a uh, an xg boost model after train test split i've trained i've used train test split i've not used k folds you can use k folds because that's the that's a good practice in that your entire training data will be used as well as uh, the every data will be uh, used for training once and then you also get a fair idea of the validation through the uh, out of four predictions after that uh, you are uh, having the XGBoost model that I have fitted uh, so the N estimators is 100 like these are the hyperparameters that I chose you can uh, use hyperparameter tuning using Optuna, grid search, random search whatever you want to use uh, to tune the model I have not tuned it because as I told earlier that is not the main focus of the talk and then I fitted it on our X train and Y train then the main topic starts that is explainable AI so now that we have created our XGBoost model for the data set, we move towards understanding the hows and whys of the model, like why the model is predicting what it is predicting. So now is where uh, explainable AI comes to play. That is the model explainability that we were talking about. That is the main topic of the talk. So what is explainable AI or model explainability? So mainly explainability in machine learning, it is the process of explaining to a human why and how a machine learning model made a decision. Model explainability means the algorithm and its decision or output can be understood by a human. So mainly it is the process of reverse engineering the predictions of a model. So you get the, you take the input, you have a model and you have the output. What you get is the predictions and you know the model. But you don't know how that model is coming to that prediction given the input. That is what model explainability will tell you. So it is mainly the process of analyzing machine learning model decisions and results to understand the reasoning behind the system's decision. That is what we do. We are using machine learning in today's world for so many tasks in so many decision making tasks in big industries, manufacturers, companies. They are using machine learning for their uh, big tasks. So 
in that the decision making is has a very important role to play now if you are using a machine learning model for your decisions you need to know you need to trust that process of decision making for that you need to know why the model is making that decision so therefore model explainability has a very crucial role to play so uh, you cannot just have a black box making some decisions and you are using it for your company your business and uh, where there is no trust you cannot use anything so you need to know the process behind the predictions uh, of uh, like whatever predictions your model is making so so this is a very important concept with black box machine learning models which develop and learn directly from data without human supervision or guidance so i already made you understand why model explainability is important so many of the ml models they achieve very high level of precisions but are not easily understandable by humans that how they came to that decision so this is especially the case of a deep learning model mainly because they are having so many neurons so many activation layers and so, so many uh, uh, parameters in them that it is like a black box so as humans we must be able to fully understand how the decisions are being made so that we can trust the decisions of ai systems so we as i talked about the trust that needs to be there to deploy a model in any system that is making big decisions using ai so that is what the trust you get that trust from model explainability so we need the ml models to function as expected to produce the transparent explanations and be visible in how they work like if you go to a and like taking a real world example if you go to a chemist and he gives you they give you some a uh, bottle of uh, medicine or a drug that doesn't have any label on it will you take it no any sane person won't take it because you don't know what that medicine is there is nothing about that medicine that you know it's just a bottle of a uh, uh, medicine and you don't even know if that's a medicine so you won't take it right so similar for uh, you cannot trust it. there is no trust over there if that medicine bottle is not having the label on it. similar similarly a models uh, advice and hows are mainly the label of that model how it is coming to that decision and that is something that we need to know if we want to trust if we want to build a trust so that we trust the decisions of ai systems only when we know how they are coming to that decision right so it is mainly like a label of uh, like I, the example i gave so mainly that is how important a models explainability is so in this notebook mainly i have illustrated you the three important model explainability methods there is this walk through of three important model explainability methods and and in detail their internal working the insights they provide and how we can interpret their results so the three important uh, model explainability methods that we are going to discuss are the first one is permutation importance the second one is sharp and the third one is line so in our problem statement what we have to predict is the energy consumption of a building that is the site ui id that is the variable name and the model we train does so that is the xg boost model we train does so it will predict the energy consumption of any buildings uh, given the features so it predicts for each sample the energy consumption but how can we get answers to questions like why your model is predicting the value it is predicting what are the variables that are positively correlated with the target it is the floor is it the floor area is it the uh, uh, other things like temperature or average temperature or the average uh, energy so or some other feature is positively correlated with the target variable what are the features that are negatively correlated with the target variable what are the variables that have the highest importance in making the predictions for the whole data set or even for a single observation with the help of these methods we can successfully answer these why is and what's and how's and which's related to our model so this is great model explainability methods are like a boon to build that trust in ai systems this is what is responsible ai a model is not making any predictions uh, in a black box mode you can know how it is coming to its decision so now we will move further to discussing the methods uh, one by one
okay so moving on to the permutation importance that is the first model explainability method that we will be discussing so permutation importance using the le5 library so before moving further to how we will use this library we need to understand how the permutation important thing works what is it doing uh, and how we can interpret this uh, result of this uh, whatever code that is written over here xgboost model is the model that we train on our data set to predict the site eui id and after that we have used this permutation importance uh, uh, from the le5 library and we have used the, an instance of this permutation importance class to get the weights of the variables that are the features and we have got energy star rating at the very first and then the facility type building class but what is it showing what is this table exactly showing like through a rough idea we we can get a rough idea that this is showing the feature importance permutation importance that is the importance of the feature uh, of the data set but then we need to know properly how the permutation importance algorithm works because you cannot have you cannot solve a black box by another black box your model is already a black box but the model explainability method needs to be understood so that you know how that model explainability method is working it should not be a black box in itself so it is uh, this model explainability method that is decoding your model so explaining your model so let's not make it a black box so moving to the permutation importance we have this very good notebook uh, that is uh, there in the uh, kaggle course on uh, explainable ai so it is by uh, kaggle grandmaster dan specker so uh, we can see that uh, uh, what features have the highest impact on the predictions this is the question that permutation importance will answer that is it will give the feature importance of the different features of your data set that your model is trained on so there are multiple ways to measure the feature importance some approaches are uh, like uh, there are other methods also like you can train a random forest classifier uh, regressor and then get the feature importance and there are even more other meta methods of a feature selection uh, like the chi square test and other we are not going there but what i am trying to say is that all those approaches have some shortcomings but when you are talking about permutation importance this is an easy to understand method it is fast to calculate the calculation time is very less and then it is consistent with the properties that we would want feature importance measure to have that is it is having uh, like it overcomes the shortcomings of other methods that are available so we will see how it works so permutation importance uses models differently than anything you have seen so far so it is a very novel approach that uh, came through this permutation importance what you can see is you see the data so you want to predict a person's height when they become 20 years old okay so these are the features of the data set and when they become 20 years old you have to predict the person's height using the data that is available at the age of 10. So our data includes useful features, features with little predictive power as well. Like you, you have the socks owned at age 10. You know this feature is having a very little predictive power. Like from your real world knowledge, how is the number of socks owned related to the height at age, at any age? So you have the height at age 10 and you have to predict the height at age 20 given the data so permutation importance is comes to play here here you can get the importance of the feature so the permutation importance is cal collected of af calculated after the model has been fitted so like in our case we fitted the xg boost model to predict the site eui id that was the building consumption so we have the site eui id that we are predicting right so in our example and here it is the height at age 20 that we are predicting. so we fitted an xg boost model so don't change the model or uh, change the predictions that you're getting uh, 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 okay for any given value for you take any new example instead you ask the following question 
if you randomly shuffle a single column of the validation data leaving the target and all other co columns in place how will that affect the accuracy of prediction in that now shuffle data so in the validation set you did the train test, train test split and you calculate you made the x train and x test so in the new x test you um, what do you do is uh, you take a feature column and you shuffle the values over the rows okay so different observations you shuffle the value of any feature like for example floor area you first shuffle the values and now that you have shuffled the values make the prediction and now you can see how the prediction is uh, uh, how accurate are the predictions how is the loss is it increasing or is it decreasing so randomly reordering a single column should cause less accurate predictions because the resulting data no longer corresponds to anything observed in the real world your data is not actually corresponding to something that you observed in the real world it is now a different data you shuffled the values of the different observations for uh, floor area for our given examples are here height age in depth so model accuracy especially suffers if we shuffle a column that the model relied heavily on predictions like a column that is of very high importance if it is shuffled then your model uh, accuracy will fall and it will give uh, it will uh, like worsen the predictions so in this case shuffling height at 10 would cause terrible predictions because now you are predicting something uh, that is based on some other data and it is nowhere close to what was actually observed in the real world so this will cause a very great shift in the accuracy original accuracy uh, very low accuracy so if we shuffle the socks owned instead the resulting predictions won't suffer much because socks owned has nothing to do with the height at age 20 so this entire insight so mainly once more we'll go through the process what i discussed get a trained model in our case it was the xg boost model shuffle the values in the single column and make predictions using the resulting data set use this predictions and the true target values to calculate how much the loss function suffered from shuffling that performance deterioration measures the importance of the variable you just suffer okay before shuffling you have some predictions and the true labels you calculate the loss after shuffling you have the predictions and the true labels calculate the loss and then you compare the two did your loss increase or did your loss decrease did the accuracy increase or it decrease your loss will actually uh, increase okay it has to decrease but it will increase in case of uh, uh, height because height is uh, like height at age 10 is an important feature but in case of uh, socks it 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 might be like it will give uh, better results you will see because that is uh, by chance it can give good results and or it, it may be possible that there is no change in the accuracy because that that feature whether it is shuffled or not suffered shuffled it is not affecting the final results so that is where the feature importance you can calculate you know this feature is not important at all because it is not affecting the final result so return the data to the original order undoing the shuffle from step two now repeat the step two with the next column in the data set until you have calculated the importance of each column so for each feature you calculate the importance like this you shuffle the row feature uh, uh, entire column and uh, then you uh, calculate the importance of that column with the model's prediction and then comparing the accuracy and after that you reshuffle it uh, back to uh, status quo that was in the originally and then you reshuffle another column whose feature importance you need to calculate and then you uh, calculate the predictions and see so this is how uh, you do this and after that whatever you get so in the green what you see is the features with the highest importance shuffling which had a terrible impact on the accuracy of the model and the red you see uh, they are the features that uh, actually affected the model in the opposite way like shuffling them had a like it increased the accuracy because these features had no importance because uh, these features uh, like there is some ra uh, what happened that uh, random shuffling it decreased uh, their model performance increased because uh, uh, 
the predictions on the shuffle data happen to be more accurate than the real data so this happens when the feature didn't matter that is importance close to zero but random chances cause the prediction on the shuffle data to be more accurate this is more common with small data sets like the one in this example like in this example you were having the heights uh, that is was a small data set and in this case it may be possible that the features have negative values because of random chance they have this accuracy that is more than the original accuracy that was on uh, unshuffled data so that is more uh, there's more room for luck and chance when you have a small data set so so this is how you calculated the importance and here the most important feature is the goals code and that seems sensible okay so and this is how we calculate the feature importance now moving to our example when i calculated the feature importance using the permutation importance class of the le5.sklearn library i have this energy star rating at the highest that is the uh, and this plus minus 0.0094 that you see over here is that is the randomness like in any statistical process you have this randomness that is uh, there you don't have a fixed value of 0 0.2344 there is this randomness on shuffling uh, that is there uh, so this is this randomness that is associated uh, so facility type is second building class is third and this is you see um, the weight of each feature that is uh, when this feature got shuffled your accuracy was hampered terribly and after that you see the zero ones that is shuffling those features didn't have any impact and you have some negative ones as well uh, but it was uh, like i told you earlier it is more in the case of smaller data sets because there is more room for luck and chance uh, over there that the accuracy on shuffling increases and like the loss is decreasing so this is what was all about permutation importance so you know now one model explainability your model is having uh, making predictions using these features on the topic and its performance is getting hampered when these features are being uh, changed so uh, this is how the first model explainability method works so moving further to the next model explainability method the second one this is sharp that is stands for sharply additive explanation so it is an algorithm that was first published in 2017 and it is a brilliant way to reverse engineer the output of a predictive algorithm so it answers more questions than the permutation importance and questions of great importance that will actually explain the predictions of a model not just on the global level that is the level of the entire data set but also on the local level that is each observation the prediction it can explain the predictions of each observation so we will now look at the Shapley values and how the sharp values emerge from the Shapley concept that is in the game theory so uh, we will see how these sharp values are calculated and uh, how it is very crucial to understand the calculation of this sharp value in order to make sense of their outcome so going through the sharp uh, sharp values calculation I'll uh, go through a block that was a uh, that is a very uh, uh, very nice block written by Samuel Mazanti ML engineer at Jakala and he has explained in a very great detail how to make sense of the formula that is used for computing the sharp values so I will uh, move towards the main thing that is the calculation of the sharp values and it is like they are based on the sharply values the sharp values and it is a concept the sharply values is a concept that comes from game theory game theory needs two things game and some players so the game reproducing the outcome of the model and players is the features of the model on which the model is built so shapely uh, what it does is quantifies the contribution that each player brings, brings to the game in game theory what each play, player brings to the game that is quantified so what sharp does is quantifies the contribution of each feature to the prediction made by the model so it is important to stress that what we call a game concerns a single observation one game is equal to one observation indeed sharp is about local interpretability of predictive model that is 
observation wise prediction that is understanding the predictions of individual observations and also on the global level but also on the local level so power set of features so what we need to do this, so in an, in this example he has taken the example of a, a person's income prediction knowing the age gender and job of the person so age gender and job are the features so what we have to do is the shapley values are based on the idea that the outcome of each possible combination of players should be considered to determine the importance of a single player so uh, in a team if there are in a game there are five players so uh, there in all the possible combinations of the five players need to be considered in order to understand the individual contribution of a player so in our case we are having the players that are the features of a model that are three a gender and job so all the possible combination of these three uh, features are need to be considered in order to understand the importance of each feature that is age gender and job that is represented through the sharp values so in our case the possible combination of f features so so small f represents a variable that can be 0 1 2 3 and f is the capital f is 3 that is the total number of of variables or the features that is 3 so we need to consider the power set so the power set consists of a phi that is not considering any of the features considering one 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 so that uh, considering one feature only so that is age and age of that consists of three uh, instances two features at a time three instances and three features at a time one instance so in total our power set of all the combinations of features consists of eight uh, values but it consists of like eight number of elements so now we need to consider a train distinctive predictive model for each distinct coalition in the power set that is we need to train two to the power f models so here our capital f is three so we need to train eight models in this case in order to know the importance of each feature so we considered all the possible calcul combination of the features and then we got eight that is the cardinal cardinality of the power set that is eight and then we need to consider the training all the eight models with the same hyperparameters and just the number of features differing in each case taking phi that is no feature at a time taking one age only age taking only gender taking only job taking age and gender age and job gender and you get that so now we have trained the eight models xg boost models in our case and then we take a new observation say it x naught that is from the validation set and we see what the eight different models predict for the same observation okay so each node represents a model so what do the edges represent the edges represent the addition of one feature so we can see that every edge uh, uh, is pointing from one node to another node and there is a difference of one feature in the connecting nodes so so here we have age here we have phi here we have gender job phi so there is a difference of one feature after that we have age gender and there is a difference of one feature of gender in addition of one feature through every edge so therefore what we need to do now is to calculate the feature importance of any feature we need to calculate the sharp values and sharp values for the calculation we need to calculate the marginal contribution of each feature first and then we take the average of that okay weighted average of the marginal contribution of each feature so imagine that we are in node one so that is the model has no feature so that is we predict the mean of all the training observations and that is uh, in our case that is 50k dollars and then we move to node 2 that is having one feature age so the prediction is 40k so now what is the difference in between the predictions is minus 10 and that is the marginal contribution on that edge so that 
edge represents this contribution and that has to be multiplied with the weight of that edge now we will see how to calculate the weight of that edge now you can see through this figure like there is weight associated with every edge and there is a marginal contribution so from phi and edge we calculated this contribution by uh, five, by subtracting 40 from 50 similarly subtracting 48 from 50 we get minus 2 100 from 50 we get a positive contrib marginal contribution and similarly we need to calculate the weights so to calculate the weights of the edge we are having two things some of the weights of like i will explain what these two mean in simple words okay so for any particular feature when you are calculating the weights of the edges the weights of the edges are basically uh, follow two things uh, uh, that for any uh, level of f if f is equal to zero the contribution of uh, the that particular feature the weight is w1 at f is equal to one the weight is w2 and w3 so f is equal to two it is w4 so w1 is equal to w4 is equal to w2 plus w3 that is addition of the weights associated with that feature at any uh, feature level at any f is equal to uh, the sum of all the edges uh, weights of the edges at any other feature level associated with that feature so that is what it is all the weights of the marginal contribution to f feature model should be equal to each other for each f so all the weights of marginal contribution for a feature should be equal to each other for each f so f is equal to zero we just have one weight associated with the marginal contribution of a but for f is equal to two we have two weights associated with the marginal contribution of a so these two need to be equal w2 is equal to w3 and f is equal to three only one so that is w4 only so here after solving the two equations we get the weights so there is one easy way to calculate the weight also that is uh, you calculate the number of nodes at each level like you just need to find the reciprocal of the total number of edges at each level okay so here it is three so it is one by three one by three one by three here it is one by six 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 and just again one by three one by three so you need to calculate the number of edges so for with each node we have uh, the uh, number of features that is there like two so we have two edges connected to this node we have two edges connected to this node as well because there is a difference of one and for two uh, like there is one for job and one for age you need to know f and then you need to know the number of nodes at each level you need to answer this question to calculate the total number of nodes how many uh, possible combination of how many combinations of f is equal to 2 are possible for capital f that is 3 so 3 c2 that is what you have to calculate and that is equal to 3 so 3 into a small f is equal to 2 we get the 6 and 1 by 6 is the weight for each edge on that particular feature level so this is what we calculate and then we calculate the reciprocal and we get the uh, sharp value for that particular feature by uh, add, uh, calculating the weighted average of the marginal contribution and weighted by the reciprocal of the weights of that feature at that particular feature level so here we get a negative sharp value that is it is forcing the this base value that is uh, the mean uh, of the predictions when there were no features so in when there were no features it was just uh, predicting the mean of the train uh, uh, wise so that was the base value plus the sum of the features sum of the sharp values of the features is equal to the predicted value okay so wrapping it up so we have the sharp value for age gender and job that is the three variables and they summing up gives 33k dollars that is exactly the difference between the output of the full model and the output of the dummy model with no features that is the mean of the train predictions train uh, uh, target variable and the prediction and there is this summing up of the 
different feature variables so summing the sharp values of each feature of a given observation yields the difference between the prediction of the model and the non model and this is for x naught that is one observation we calculated the sharp values for different features so age and gender have a negative impact and job has a positive impact in calculating the prediction so this is what was all about sharp values moving to further uh, towards uh, the sharp values we have uh, uh, in our case we used the sharp values to calculate the global interpretability and the local interpretability the global interpretability that concerns the entire data set local interpretability that concerns the only one prediction so in both the ways we can calculate different plots and these plots give different information about our uh, model and how the model is making predictions in this we can see that from the sharp values calculated we we can see a summary plot regarding the entire validation data on the entire x test that uh, the energy star rating is the highest variable of importance and facility type building class and this is the same that we got from the permutation importance as well then we have the plots bar that that plots the sharp values itself for the entire like it it is meaning the sharp value. it is calculating the mean of the sharp values because you calculate the sharp values for each example and then you mean it over the all the rows of the validation uh, all the observations so you get a uh, highest for energy star rating second for facility type and third for building class that is also accordingly because uh, sharp value high means it is more uh, it is like forcing your model on the positive models prediction on the positive side a high value uh, on the positive side this particular feature so moving towards the summary plot to, to understand the summary plot again i will refer to a blog that is a uh, good fun on the uh, this uh, sharp value so when you look at the summary plot it is also for the global interpretability it shows you the positive or the negative relationships of the predictors with the target variables so it is made up of all the dots in the training data so the sharp, sharp value plot represents to us the feature importance that our variables are ranked in descending order in this case it is uh, the high the variable that is of most importance in, in the top and the variable of least importance that is at the bottom then we have the impact the horizontal location shows whether the effect of the is associated with the higher or lower prediction so uh, that is uh, whether a high prediction was made for the target variable or a low prediction was made that is this uh, uh, location on the horizontal axis and the original value the color shows whether the variable is high or low for that observation so whether it, if it is red if that variable is low and if it is uh, a variable is high and low for blue is the, is the meaning so alcohol uh, for a high value that is comprises of the entire like on the entire train data so for a high value of alcohol we get a high value of the prediction because the horizontal location is on the higher side horizontal location is on the right side that implies high value of the prediction so high value of alcohol high value of prediction so we can uh, correlation is positive correlation with the uh, uh, quality rating that is the variable that we were predicting so high comes from the red color and the positive impact is shown on the y axis similarly volatile acidity has a negative impact because the high value is shown from the x axis but a low value of volatile acidity gives a high value of the prediction because blue is a low value so similarly now we can see in this summary plot as well that energy star rating is having a negative impact because uh, it is having a high value of sharp that is it is giving a higher value but at uh, lower energy star rating okay let's see the energy star rating is it is having a positive sharp value that you can see that is the uh, prediction is high but then the energy star rating value is not high 
it is low for lower values you are having higher values of uh, predictions of the site ui id so or building energy consumption so energy star rating is high so when it is high then you are having low energy consumption okay so this is what it is and it is uh, like understandable also in facility type red means that the facility type value uh, for that particular uh, for for any observation if you take a point so for that particular observation because this is important it is important to note that this is for global interpretability i have not considered any particular shaft value over here it is considered over the entire prediction data that is the validation data so it consists of data points all over the validation data set so facility type if you take one point from here say some point from the left hand side so it is having a very high value that is by denoted by the red color and for the high value the shaft value is very low that is the value that is being predicted for the variable that is the target variable is low so for high value of facility low value is predicted that implies the correlation is negative so building class is also having a negative correlation so this is something that you need to understand over here okay so now we look at the waterford plot so the waterford plot the information it is providing is when you look at the bottom of the plot it starts from a base value that is first of all it is used for local interpretability that is interpreting the individual prediction for an observation of observation in the validation data set so it is using e of fx that is 78.695 that is the base value that is the value corresponding to the uh, prediction made on the training data uh, made on any observation when the features you are using is zero so uh, you are not using any of the features so it corresponds to when you are calculating the shaft values we saw the phi so for the phi when there were no features used the prediction made was the base value that is the uh, mean of all the train target variable so that is 78.695 after that we see the on the y axis we have different features and their values for the particular observation and we see how each feature uh, affects the final uh, prediction through its sharp values so base value minus 0 0.26 that is contributed by 53 other features and after that snow depth inches contributes a plus 0 0.44 then plus 4.6 and then negative by the facility type then for this observation building class is a positive uh, uh, effect on the final prediction and then very negative effect that the energy star rating gives a final prediction of 67.313 similarly for another observation we have a similar plot the final prediction is 76.512 then we look at a force plot so the force plot is actually <coughs> is also a similar plot uh, but here we have a base value that is 78.69 that is the same base value over here that is the uh, what we talked about the average of the training uh, uh, target variable and what is predicted is 67.31 and how from the base value the facility type is pushing the prediction towards the right and energy star rating is pushing the prediction uh, towards the left and the facility type is also pushing it towards the left and we have the sharp values and actually we are having the uh, values of the different uh, uh, variables over here and for this observation we are having the feature importance also like uh, the in the descending order energy star rating is having highest feature importance for this and uh, snow depth inches uh, among the given features is having lowest for feature importance and building class is having in this second example building class is having the highest feature importance <coughs> after that we have uh, here uh, the this fit is telling the highest feature importance and what is the uh, like the value for that particular example that is 1.255 and then we have a base value we have the predicted value and in which direction the feature is pushing the final prediction towards either it is having a positive impact on the final prediction or it is having a negative impact on the final prediction and in what quantity is specified by the width so blue means negative and 
uh, red means positive and similarly for another observation also in case of it uh, uh, like this uh, we also have a decision plot when the number of features is very more in large numbers than waterfall plot generally we don't use because uh, it becomes a bit clumsy so other features are included over here so you can see that you start from a base value and from the base value how these features are affecting the model and final prediction is over here so this is how we interpret the sharp values after that we move towards line that is the local interpretable model agnostic explanations so it explains the predictions of any classifier in an interpretable and faithful manner by learning an interpretable model locally around the prediction so we can understand the line concept in detail over here in this uh, block so we see that uh, in this uh, line it is it has two salient features that is it is easy to interpret a linear model can have hundreds or thousands of variable but is it more interpretable than the complex gradient boosting model so it is not because uh, what happens is that for a particular observation you are doing a local interpretability so for a particular observation uh, uh, there is uh, not all features are uh, equally important and it is the problem uh, is not that complex when it is for the entire data set so when you are making a prediction so not all features are involved only there are some few self subset of features that are involved and they are playing major roles in either shifting the prediction towards the a predicted value or in the opposite direction of the predicted value so local fidelity is like the individual prediction should at least be locally faithful that is it must be corresponding to how the model behaves in the vicinity of the individual observations being pre predicted even if the model is having like in our case it is having 64 variables uh, 63 variables so not all are there uh, for making a particular prediction but in case of a model that is making a prediction it is important that we know that in in the vicinity of the look like in the local interpretability when we are talking about it could be only handful of a variables they directly relate to a local prediction okay. the local fidelity is very important that a handful of a variable is only a responsible for making prediction uh, for a individual observation so it could be the case that even if a model is having hundreds of variables it more it is the features that are globally important may not be important in the local context and vice versa so a model should actually be uh, faithful in its local context the in its vicinity so uh, the in its vicinity the observations should be related to each other so what does lime actually do so uh, we can see like in the paper uh, of lime they you, they gave this very intuitive plot so uh, the original model over here it is represented in red and blue and it is not a linear regression model and you can see that what the model actually uh, does uh, is uh, you need to understand the predictions for this red cross over here and uh, what do you need to do to understand the prediction for an observation what lime does is new samples are generated uh, like a normal uh, distribution from 0 to 1 and new sample is generated from there uh, norm from a normal probability distribution so after that it is scaled according to the distribution of the uh, different features uh, uh, the mean and the standard deviation according to that they are scaled and that is how a new new point is generated in the vicinity of the uh, point we are experimenting with and after that these new samples are weighted according to their proximity to the instance being explained so linear regression of these newly created samples including the red cross is then fitted a linear regression model is being fitted to the new samples as well as the red cross that was the sample whose prediction is to be examined and the, the dashed line is the learned explanation that is locally faithful so here this learned explanation in the vicinity is locally faithful and it will uh, actually uh, give 
inferences or results that will be uh, uh, not uh, followed by all the uh, predictions but in the vicinity of their predictions by the new samples at least these uh, trends that will be interpreted uh, by the uh, line that is uh, fitted over here will be uh, the trends that we will see that will be followed by the new points or it will be uh, followed in the vicinity of the observation so that local fidelity is what we were talking about so we will see now how to use line we can move further to our case where we have line tabular because we are having line text and line images as well for nl for other tasks in natural language processing and computer vision so we are looking at line tabular right now because ours is a tabular data continuous variables some categorical features as well then explainer explain so this local explanation that you are getting is actually intercept is 76.99 so what is this intercept intercept is the linear regression model that was locally fitted to a particular observation the zeroth uh, like the first observation i'm seeing the prediction local so this linear observation uh, the linear regression model fitted pr that predicts 80.67 whereas uh, of the uh, for the target variable that is the value predicted and the right that is what is the actual value predicted from the actual model that is xg boost is 67.31 so it is almost close and then we can see the local explanation that is provided that will be faithful in the local vicinity that will be adhered to or followed by the samples in the newly generated ones that is energy star rating greater than 0.65 it has a negative impact on the prediction facility type is having a positive impact when it is less than equal to 0.09 so these are the different constraints based on which this local explanation has been made it is not being made for the entire all the values of any feature but in a constrained region of the feature the impact is seen on the final value of the prediction that is being made so after that we have you have these are the uh, the one column one shows the coefficients uh, of these features in the linear model that was fitted and after that we can see this prediction and the the impact that we saw right now so energy star rating having a negative impact and the positive impact by the facility i mean this is like in a more uh, understandable and interpretable way so here we are having the feature and the value of the coefficient so once you add up these values of the coefficient to the uh, intercept value then you actually get the predicted value okay so the line model uh, intercept uh, you can see over here in this example also it is 5.562 the align model prediction and the original uh, random forest in our case it was xg boost that is by right so how does line get its prediction local it is the intercept plus the sum of the coefficient because the intercept and the total coefficient the line prediction is it now so we see that it just fits a local model uh, in the vicinity by generating new samples of the point where the prediction is being tested prediction is being uh, examined so this was all about the three explainability methods that we talked about i will publish this notebook on kaggle so, uh, soon after uh, writing all the things that i have discussed today so you can uh, see it in the wits data thon notebook section and or in my kaggle account that is shreya sajal so there uh, all the inferences that we gathered in today's talk and everything i will be mentioning in it and uh, i hope the points the model explainability methods they're working the interpretation was clear so thank you and have a great day